Psalms chapter 2, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Verse 2. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing, saying, verse 3, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. All praise to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rekakadash, Psalms. 83 verse 3 it says they have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted against your hidden ones verse 4 they have said come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Verse 5 For they have consulted together with one consent, they are confederate against you. See, all of these so called nations that's in the United Nations, they are confederate against. The Lord, they are against God, and they are against his nation, his people. You see, and they do not want his people to return to their homeland and to start to rule. So they're, they're against him and his plans because his plans is to return his people to their homeland and to rule. When you go to Isaiah chapter 2, one of the famous prophets, Isaiah, he prophesied uh, uh, concerning Judah and Jerusalem, the, the people of God. See, verse 2 say, It shall come to pass that in the last days the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. The mountains represent nations. So it's saying, The mountain of the Lord's house, which are Judah and Jerusalem, the nation that is of the Lord's house, shall be established in the top of the other nations. See? It say, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. The other nation is going to flow into the nation of Judah and Jerusalem. And so, verse 3, it says, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, the nation of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion go forth the law. Zion represents the children of Israel. The word and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Okay, let's get that in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter, let's see, 60, verse 14. It says, The sons also that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet and they shall call you meaning the Israelites the city of the Lord 
the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. You see, Zion is another name for Jerusalem. And they're going to call the people. The people is going to be the ones they're going to come bowing at the soles of their feet. Okay, this is in Jeremiah, I mean, uh, Zechariah also. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew or an inhabitant or an Israelite, basically, saying, we will go with you, meaning we're going to go up to the mountain of the Lord, for we have heard that God is with you. See, we have heard he is with you only, so we're going to go with you. See, he's not with us. He's with you, so we're going to go with you. That's what they're going to hear in the last days. You see? And so that's why these nations are trying to come against the Lord. They're jealous. They're envious. Let's get that. They did this in the garden. That serpent was the nations coming together to detour the, the chosen bloodline who the Lord chose to disperse his law they came against him against that nation and that nation was Adam meaning the man pretty much that the Lord was going to give the law to to disperse to the other nation Ezekiel 31 and 9 it say I have made him talking about that nation of Adam fought fair by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees in Edom that were in the garden of God envied him. You see, these other nations envy the nation of Israel. And they want to cut them off from being a nation. The Egyptians envied the Israelites. Let's see if we can get this real quick. Is in the beginning of Exodus. Exodus chapter 1, it says, chapter 1, verse 9, it says, And he said unto the people, uh, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. See, because he made the children of Israel stronger than the other nations. Let's get that real quick. Genesis 25. Genesis 25 and 23. It say, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. That means pretty much the Gentiles, the heathens, uh, and the nation of Israel. But this, this other nation was the nation of Esau, which we see is in the middle and the majority of this united nation. It says, just Genesis 25 and 23, and two, uh, it says, two nations are in thy womb, two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and one people shall be stronger than the other people. See, that's why the Egyptians say they are mightier than us, because the nation of Israel was made to be mightier, because they was going to be the lawgivers. They was going to be the lawgivers that the other nations was going to envy and have to serve. That was the blessing that he gave to the nation of Israel. When Haman was in the, the Persians, he was trying to convince the Persians to exterminate the nation of Israel. And this is what the Edomites is trying to convince the other nations. Let's get down in Esther chapter 3. Esau have, is trying to convince these other nations, let's do away with these Israelites. Okay, when you go into, um, let's see here. Because it spells out 
the details of what he said. Okay, let's get chapter 3 of Esther, verse 8. It says, um, Haman said unto the king, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of your kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people. You see? Then jump down to verse 13. It says, And the letters were sent by post into all the king's providences to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews. See? Both young and old, little children and women in one day. And so this is the plan of the United Nations. This is the plan of the so-called white man who is the nation of Edom and all the other nations that follow them. Now when you go into the hypocrisy, the reason they took that out of the Bible because it exposed their plans. Okay? When you go into um, Ezra, uh, the Maccabees, see? The Maccabees expose their plans and the, the strategy that they use. It says, at first Maccabees 5 and 3, thus then Judas fought against the children of Esau. See? The Greeks was the Edomites. The Greeks was the Edomites because the Maccabees was fighting the Greeks. It says, um, just get straight to the point. Um, this first Maccabees chapter 5, we're going to go to, um, let's see here, verse 9, it says, Then the heathen, see the other nation that were at Galad, assembled themselves together against the Israelites. This is what they do. This is what the United Nations is set up for. This is the beast in Revelation 18 and 17 and 19 and 13. This is the beast that the nation of Israel cannot war with them. Verse 9, it says, Then the heathen, no, don't jump down to verse 10, 1 Maccabees 5 and 10, and sent letters unto Judas and his brethren. The heathen that are round about us are assembled together against us to destroy us. See, this is what the nation does. They go with the children of Esau. They assemble themselves together with the children of Esau to destroy the Israelites. And that's the campaign that the peoples are on. They're not trying to come against the so-called Christians or the so-called Jehovah Wickedness or the Muslims. They don't care about religion. These individuals are all together, assembled together, to come against the children of Israel. The only nation and the only people that don't have a seat in this building is the children of Israel. It's not a Native American seat. It's not a, a descendants of slaves seat. You see, it's not a, a Hispanic seat with Guatemala, the South American seat. They don't have seats in the United Nations. And if it's a seat from one of these nations, they got an Edomite ruling that situation and presenting himself. They're not going to let a Hispanic or Latino come into the United Nations and hear what they're talking about and know the whole the plan of everything. A Hamite, to let you know we not no thinking African, a Hamite is in the building. He on the left, right, the right hand side at the round table. See, he at the on the, at the left uh, hand side at the, at the in the corner at the top corner of the of the of the table 
but they're not going to let her black, Hispanic, and Native American descendants of slaves that have been scattered around the, the globe like they were scattered in the, in the Persian kingdom and all the providence, providences, they're not going to let these individuals come into their meetings and their summons because they are an organization and a body that's coming together to try to fight the Lord and his people. And so that's why you have these poor nations that don't have us, uh, that's not getting that uh, medicine, that juice. They're not trying to feed all these other nations the juice. The, na the, the, the focus of giving out the juice is, is in the United States of America. In these European rich countries, where the descendants of slaves were sent. Where all the slaves were sent, that's where the juice is being uh, pushed out. And they try to say it's about it's because they got this money, they can push the juice out, but it's not about money. It's about the children of Israel. When you got the abortion clinic and Margaret Sanger, she was on a campaign to push the agenda to get rid of the children of Israel. And then she is being glorified by the heads of state. They're giving her rewards and, and, and saying she did a, a magnificent work with Hillary Clinton. She, she, she made it where we can get rid of the children of Israel and nobody can know about it. They think it's just the women's rights to do what they want to do with their body. But it has nothing to do with that. It's about cutting off the nation of Israel, envying the nation of Israel because God chose them to be the kings and the priests and the police to the world. That's why you have people in America, then they, they say, F the police, because they envious that the police got to tell them what to do. They don't want the police telling them what to do. They want to rebel against the police. And this is what the other nations, this is the spirit that they're in. They don't want this nation to be able to rule and tell them what to do. And they want to rebel against that. And they come with their witchcraft and all kind of things. And they are joined together to do these things. When the slave trade happened, the ships was coming from uh, these Asian countries. The Asians knew what they was doing, what their mission was. They was in cahoots with the, with the um, so-called Edomites. They was um, in, the Arabs was in cahoots with the Edomites. The Hamites was in cahoots. All of these individuals had united together to come against the children of Israel, and nothing has changed. And so this is the beast. This is who the dragon is reigning over and riding on top of. See. She, she wearing red like the great red dragon. They are ruling over the kings of the earth. You got Moab sitting there right by Esau. Because Moab and Esau have a major connection. And throughout this captivity, they have been united against the children of Israel. They was two, two, two of the main players against the children of Israel to keep them in captivity and prosper off of them. That's why in Zechariah 11 and 5 it say, they that sell them say we are rich. See, they praise the Lord because they are rich because their kingdom is off the back of the children of Israel. But the Revelation 13 and 10 says that who that he that leading in the captivity shall go into captivity. Jeremiah sixteen and thirty I mean Jeremiah thirty sixteen 
Say all they that devour thee shall be devoured. Every one of them shall go into captivity. See, these other nations is going to have to go into captivity. Psalms 2 and, and 8 say that these heathens is going to be a possession to the nation of Israel. Isaiah 14 and 2. They will have to go into captivity under the children of Israel and be servants and handmaids. Isaiah 60. They're going to have to build up the walls and build the houses and, and the dwelling places of the children of Israel. Joel 3 and uh, 8 or 9, the Hamites, the, 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 the African, they're going to be the taskmasters over the other heathen, telling them what to do by the command of the Israelites. And so this is the future of this beast. This is the future of this uh, assembly of heathens. And this is how the Lord organized the story. This is how he planned on everything to play out. And that's, his, that's what the Holy Scriptures was all about. Not about sin and not about going to heaven or hell. That's 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 a backstory to the the big meaning and the theme of the Bible. But I'm gonna leave it there. All praises to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Rikakadash. Double honors to the elders pushing the truth. Peace to the elect worldwide. The blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, descendants of slaves scattered around the globe. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.